All right, welcome back to your balance diet of Teletimia, the Good Morning Ninja show. Yes, water transportation are something where we need to actually embrace, especially for inside Lagos State, and we need to invest into them because we don't see cases of um, people dying still, um, just from um, water transportation. A very nice one, and thanks a bunch to our correspondent. We actually do this particular um, clip. Now, time for us to meet a Kajat person inside the house. When you talk about fashion, she gets 100%. When you talk about beauty, she's a person where actually she gets passion for beauty. And then when you talk about media, journalism, she's a person where you get passion for them. She not just get passion, she actually goes to school for them. She goes to school um, for inside the University of America where she studied journalism and then she comes to move further to study um, international public relations. And then when you come talk about um, voluntary acts, philanthropic work, she and a person too will get passion for them. Join me, welcome Idia Asen inside the house. Good to have you. Hi, good morning. Hey, welcome, Hello. welcome to Azobe TV. So Having now, me. before we even go in proper on top of the project and your mission and objective, and also we'll get this short video, mm -hmm. we'll go throw more light into waiting mm -hmm. if they do, we'll watch them. I am one person. How do I make a difference? Boko Haram horrified the world. And under attack by headsmen. Xenophobia violence seems to be spreading among... Saturday's attack at the president's rally in Bulawayo. Two blasts in two countries thousands of miles apart threatened the lives of two African leaders on Saturday. I still believe there are people doing good. People are always underestimating what Africa could be. Media must drive agendas. Media must shape the conversation. Media must provoke action. But there is so much positive change being shielded by what sells. The only way to change Africa is to show people how far we've come, how much development has taken place. The world is always trying to show you our continent's problems. But I'm here to show you the other half of the story. I really like that because wow. she don't decide to change the story. The story where... It um, we don't already get for inside Wibodo, Nigeria. We both would say we are changing the narrative. A very good initiative. Thank you. But I think before we talk about this initiative, make people get to know more about you. Your personality, now people want to know. Tell us about your background and how this passion, first of all, for media, takes that. Well, um, simple. I, I obviously love media. I love fashion. Uh, I love creating content. I'm from a really, really big family. So um, I was the youngest kid. So I always had more um, flexibility when it comes to chasing your passion. It wasn't easy in the beginning. Um, I started off as a model and at the same time studying journalism in American University in DC. Um, then I moved to New York where I went to NYU. Um, I always wanted to be a journalist. Like when I was younger, I would watch Amman Poor. But mm. at the same time, I had like this really, really strong interest in fashion. And then as time went by, I realized that I was passionate about issues affecting Africa. Now, it's not really easy to combine everything, but one thing that I learned abroad was just, no matter how hard you work, they'll say, oh, you're doing really well for an African, or you're doing, oh, you're really smart for like a Nigerian, or you're really, and I just thought to myself, like, what are we, what are these people watching? Stories, to yeah. Exactly. And then you would see a lot of uh, news stories, and of course, bad news seemed yeah. to sell really, yeah. really fast. But I remember when I put out um, the launch of this project, we got so much traction just to show you that people, people do want to see more positive things come out of mm -hmm. Africa. People are frustrated um, with the negative you know, connotations around oh, all Nigerians being fraudsters or all oh, South Africans hating Nigerians and all that. That's never the full story. And I just want an opportunity to show people the areas and the fields that are actually thriving mm. on our continent. So tell us this journey now where you don't start, how challenging you don't do because we, they see the final product and everybody they say, oh, that's so nice. That's, but tell us some of the things that you face, especially as a woman uh, trying sister. to get this done. <laughs> my sister, I know is <laughs> I know, right? Um, just first of all, deciding to do it. And then, you know, everybody knows that here setting up businesses isn't easy. Trying to get staff on board. You're changing production every minute because, you know, you have a schedule and then the production people all of a sudden are not available anymore. You schedule interviews with high level people, you know how hard those interviews are to secure, people cancel, stuff like that. Budget, you know, mm. you predict that you're gonna need a certain amount, then you realize, you know, you need much more. 
by the time you actually start. So that was very, very hard. And I was doing all that by myself. Um, and then just certain interviews you'd go for and people are like, why are you doing all this stuff? You know, ah, just be my girlfriend. You know, and, and <laughs> it happens. And, you know, I had, um, I was frustrated in the beginning, but a lot of people told me that mm, just expect that. Just focus on your focus and, you know, and wow. you'll get it done. So. so maybe we take him back a little bit now. Tell us more about the EDR project <coughs> and how this passion for giving back to the society has come up. Um, uh, God bless his soul. My father's late, but while he was alive, like I always saw somebody that was very socially responsible just because he grew up with, well, because he grew up with nothing. And then also he was just a very um, caring, kind person. So he would always work with like churches, schools in his state, stuff like that. He would always give back. He used to be responsible for so many people. And I was like, wow. Um, one thing he made sure we understood was that no matter where you go, no matter who you think you've become, you must always look at the person next to you and make sure that they are thriving and they're good as well. So if you're not doing anything for your community, who are you really, you know? And then um, my mom as well, very, very active. Um, she used to be a, a part of this uh, Lions Club. She used to be president at one point. So she's always giving back uh, to her community as well, always traveling to work with children. And I just, I was very inspired by that. Um, I feel like I've traveled a lot and I, I, I couldn't stomach the thought of just living in America and then starting this whole organization talking about Africa. I am not even in Africa. So it was very important to me to be here, very important to me to be in all the locations that I wanted to talk about um, while on this journey. So, so tell us now some of the things where you don't come out to try to showcase to the international communities in terms of, of what we get for so, Africa. So now I'm um, in a few weeks, the first episode that is really coming, that is coming to people's screens is about women. It's about women and, you know, just how far we've advanced in different, um, in different fields, right, um, in Nigeria. And we're talking about fertility. We're talking about, um, we're talking about fertility, power, politics, uh, trafficking, rape, perception, and so many things. And I'm really, really excited about that episode. It wasn't supposed to be the first episode. But when we started shooting, I was like, this is powerful, right? This is something that people need to understand because right now there's a huge movement um, for women to be empowered and to sort of feel like they have an equal stake in various communities around the world. So it's something that a lot of people can learn, especially and be inspired by, because to see these advancement, advancements take place in Nigeria is a really big deal. So. Mm. Now, you know, woman, where they actually do well in different fields where you put your hand inside. I want also to do, um, maybe we come out from this a little bit and talk okay. about um, negative comments online. I they follow you online and mm -hmm. I see how much you say they push those negative comments aside. Now, let's talk about the recent one where it happened with the Big Brother Nigeria show mm -hmm. where you go there as a judge. <laughs> as in, so, I, in, in short, I mean, not the way that they happen. Why does this only keep for me coming to go, up? No, because, because really, we need to understand what point. is happening. Like, yeah. only for me to go online and she's being attacked. But I, one thing where I actually respect about you, they say, you turn that into something good. You not actually take them in and say, okay, why are they attacking me and this? You kept on posting positive things and then posting positive ca um, caption. Tell us about that period. To be honest, please. Um, I know that maybe I don't know what happened with within the house. I don't even really remember it right now. But I do know that I thought I did a good job. It's not really mm -hmm. easy to make a decision like that that affects somebody winning so much money. Mm -hmm. um, so I came out. I was really excited. I posted my first picture. I was like, oh, I did a good job. And next thing I was hearing, thrum, 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 right? messages just coming out. Was like, I was like, oh, that picture must have been really nice. <laughs> and then I posted another one. And then my friends started calling me to check on me. That's when I was like, hey, something <laughs> is wrong. Go. Something is wrong. And then I started reading the comments. Of course, I don't think it's easy for anybody yeah, to yeah. see those kind of things written about them. But then my sister, I have a very strong support system. So my, my family was like, I beg, do you care about these people? These people don't even know you. They don't care. And they'll write and forget about it. They'll see you tomorrow. They'll probably say hi. They won't even know you're the one. So if I change this hairstyle now, <laughs> they may not even know it's me. So yeah, it's not easy. But I've also seen celebrities for years take all those like punches. Yes. And none of them died. Mm -hmm. so. I what do like you that. think about cyberbullying? Because when they get, um, <coughs> when they get those kind of things when they happen now, it will be between fans and um, and mm -hmm. celebrities, or even between celebrities themselves, where one person just wait, I just wait for you, just throw me one, mm -hmm. just this little just like this. Just give me one. What will give you on that? Like exactly. Honestly. So we see a lot of that. It can't be like say beef there for the industry, mm. like there's this hidden beef, and then when you look at women, 
You can't be like, say, it's even Some worse. Honestly, I used to deny it myself mm. until, you know, you hear certain things that are said about yourself, you hear certain things that, that are said about people, and you realize, come on, like, this doesn't even make sense. You don't even mm. know that person that you're talking about. You don't even know the full story. You see mm -hmm. full stories online sometimes, and they're twisted. And you're like, that's not what even happened. Like, you're the person's friend, you know what happened. Um, I think the internet has just created a space where people, they take, drag themselves down, and it's horrible because it's, it's like the worst thing you can do to a person is try to assassinate their character just so that people don't have that confidence in them anymore. And I see it happen to so many people. I think, it's, I think only weak people do it. I think, um, I think if you have a vision and a focus and a future and you know who you are, you know where you're going, I don't think you will let it bother you. But I know it's really, really, really hard. I've seen people go through it and I just thank God that my own was Big Brother. <laughs> <laughs> so what do they expect for media? Uh, you can expect um, the launch of the project soon. I'm also thinking about going into um, my own business, so clothing mm -hmm. line, probably. Ooh. You have to. I'm just thinking, you like, to. what's the point of rocking all these things well, and then you're not making anything from it? Yeah. Name to it yourself. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm thinking very seriously about that. <clears throat> so we should be looking to, like, early next year. Really, really. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Thank Idia you. I sensei. You come inside the house to best. share your passion yeah. with us and then Thank talk you. about all the things really happen for inside the industry. We can't wait to see more and more of some of the things that we go do. But where would you actually watch um, episodes of the Idia projects? Um, I will make that announcement in about three weeks. Okay, not yet. Mm. Yes, yes. So okay. follow our okay. top Instagram, a page they're very open for you to follow. Idia. Idia. Is that dot? ICM. Yes. ICN. So follow her and then she's going to update you on how you go take watch and the episode. Thanks a bunch. Thank Wish you the very best. Thank well, you. Buddy. To enjoy more of this, our Ogonga videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.